<laughs> Hello anglers, we're back fishing Florida. Joanna and myself, we are here at Juno Beach Pier doing some pier fishing today. When fishing at a pier, make sure you come prepared with items like a cooler if you plan on keeping legal catches, chairs, various rods, bait, sunscreen, drinks, snacks, a rag towel, etc. Always make sure you are prepared whenever you go fishing. So why go pier fishing? Well, piers offer great structure for fish to congregate, uh, a lot of big fish and other big predatory fish uh, to go through the piers and it provides very, very good structure uh, for fish. So that's one reason why anglers flock to piers and do some pier fishing. Uh, today we are targeting uh, some snappers, uh, maybe some blue fish. We did check the fishing report and heard that blue fish are in the area. Uh, but maybe we'll get lucky and get some jacks or mackerels or a passing snook. We don't know. Let's rig up our rods, let's get our bait in the water, and let's see what we catch today. How it works is you have a weight at the bottom and then usually one or two hooks above the actual weight. Now this keeps your hooks and your baits off the bottom so that way the midwater fish can see it and hopefully catch your bait. So the knot that I'm gonna use today is called the dropper loop. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna take my leader, we're gonna make a loop, and then I'm gonna take my tag in and actually wrap it around my loop. And I wanna do that six to seven times. Now once you've done that, you want to find the middle of your loops. Once you find the middle, you're going to split the loops and you're going to actually send your line in through. Now normally, you would actually bite this and pull the two ends, but we're going to borrow Miss Lisa's fingers, so she's going to pretend to be the teeth, and I'm going to pull tight, and there's our loop, and there's our knot. So I'm going to do one more of those. Pull some more lines so my hook's a little higher. Once again, I'm gonna make a loop. And with my tag end, even though I do already have a loop here, that's okay. I'm gonna do some more loops, six to seven, just like before. We're gonna find the middle, put the loop through. Lisa's gonna help me out. Remember, that's the part you put in your mouth and you pull tight. And there it is. So when pier fishing, you're gonna wanna use a weight. You want your bait to hit near the bottom where all the fish are. You don't really want it floating at the surface where there's nothing there. So there's several baits that you can use. We've got bank sinkers, pyramid sinkers, and egg weights. But depending on how strong the current is, it's gonna depend on which one, what size you're going to use. So for instance, if the current is light, maybe a little half ounce egg sinker is plenty. But if the current's really strong and I want my bait to stay still, maybe I'm gonna use a pyramid weight and anchor it to the bottom. That's kind of what this nice little flat surface does. It anchors it in the sediment and it stays there. Today, the current's not too bad, but we're probably gonna use a one ounce weight today. If our bait keeps moving, then we're gonna up it up to something a little heavier. And we'll see. So now that we have our two loops for our hooks, I need to make a loop on the end where my weight is actually going to sit. So how I do that is really simple. I'm just gonna pinch my line, and just like I tie my shoes, I'm gonna make a single loop here, tuck my loop underneath once, then twice. This is called a double surgeon's knot, and then I'm gonna pull nice and tight, okay? We're always gonna make sure we cut off our tag ends because we don't like tag ends, nor do the fish. Okay, so now how we attach the weight, we're gonna pinch this loop nice and tight and actually push it through the eye of this bank sinker. And then I need to slide that loop over the sinker, get that knot back through, and now that loop is on there and that weight is on there nice and tight.
This also is really beneficial because if I decide this hook is too small, this is a one-aught hook, and let's say I see some bigger fish and I want to change it to a larger hook, I can easily switch it out for another hook. All right, so here's our completed dropper loop. I've got my two hooks attached, my bank sinker over here, and then I've got it all attached to a swivel, which is attached to my fishing rod. So now all I'm ready for is my bait. So if you watched one of our previous field trips at Bill Keith Preserve, you learned that we use a cast net to catch bait. However, we're not gonna use one of these on the pier. We're about 40 feet above the water. This isn't long enough. What we're gonna use are sabikis. Sabikis are basically a fishing line with multiple hooks on it and they're decorative hooks to attract bait fish. But there are a lot of varieties of sabikis, so you wanna make sure what you wanna catch as bait, that's the sabiki you wanna catch because they're small hooks, big hooks, decorative hooks, there's a whole variety of them. When picking a sabiki, you always want to check the hooks to see what kind of hook you want to catch your bait. Larger hooks will catch you larger bait fish, while smaller hooks will catch you smaller bait fish, kind of like pilchards, which is what I'm aiming for today. Now, you do always want to check the hooks, not always the hook size, because both of these sabikis right here are actually a size three, but the hooks are completely different. Now, how you rig up a sabiki, you're gonna flip it over, and you're gonna see one side has a swivel, one side has a swivel with a clip. That attaches to your weight. The swivel alone attaches to your rod. You flip over the plastic, take your fishing line, and you wanna use a smaller, thinner rod, a flexible rod, so that way you can feel when the fish are on. Don't forget to cut your tag ends. And then on our other side, we have our little clip swivel. We're gonna open that, and I'm gonna use a casting weight to attach it on. Make sure it's closed. And now what I'm gonna do is very carefully hold onto this package so it doesn't fly away. I'm going to actually pull out my hooks. And they're just basically gonna come right off, nice and easy. Be very careful. Sabiki hooks are very, very sharp. Make sure this gets disposed of properly in the trash can. When using a sabiki, you want to kind of check for any bait fish that are below the pier. Now, I don't see any right now, but the water is a little cloudy, but I don't know. Maybe there are some bait fish down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently cast this line out. Once it hits the water, I'm going to kind of twerk the rod, kind of bounce the rod. You want that flexible rod because when a little bait fish actually bites it, you're going to feel it more. When you use a sabiki to catch your own bait fish, you want to make sure that you have a bucket with a lid, there are a lot of birds on this pier and they'll go in and try to steal your bait. So make sure it has a lid on it. And then also make sure we have an aerator with, with plenty of batteries to stick in there and give the bait fish enough, enough oxygen to stay alive. Now to fill this, you can fill it with salt water from shore okay, on the beach. Or if you do bring in a, a big enough rope, you can kind of lower it down and get a little bit of salt water into the bucket right off where your where your spot is on the fishing pier. To get the bait fish off of the sabiki, it's best to use a de-hooking tool. Now de-hooking tools are great to get the fish off of the hook without touching it. So the more you handle bait fish, the better the chance they won't survive. Okay, so always make sure you have a, a little de-hooker. The small de-hooking de tools work better for the smaller hooks on the sabiki. You can use bigger de-hooking tools for the fish that you catch if you're just doing catch and release or if it's not a legal catch and they have to get it back in the water as quickly as possible.
So if we're not lucky to catch any live bait fish on the sabiki, we do have a backup bait. So this is ballyhoo, and I'm going to cut it in basically cut chunks. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my knife very carefully. It doesn't matter if you cut it at an angle or cut it straight, but I'm going to cut little chunks off just like that. And I can even make some of them different sizes in case there's a smaller fish that wants to bite my little ballyhoo here. And this is going to get hooked on my rig from the meat through the skin and just like that. It's also a really good idea to have a rag towel with you when you're on a pier because after you cut the bait and after you handle the bait a lot, your hands are going to get a little gross and sticky. So the towel will help you dry off and keep a little cleaner. So when you fish on a pier, sometimes it's a good idea to bring more than one rod, so that way it increases your chances of catching a fish. Now, the type of rod and reel I like to use is actually called the bait runner. They actually have two sets of drag, so that way you can actually set the bait runner drag on, so when you actually catch a fish, the line will run, but then when you're ready to actually reel in the fish, the line is automatically set and you're ready to catch that fish. Now, if you don't have a bait runner reel, that's fine. You can still use a regular rod reel like this and just loosen the drag so that way when a fish does bite, you will feel or you will hear that run. But again, the slight disadvantage to that is once you catch a fish, you have to manually set the drag as you're reeling in the fish. With that bait runner feature, I don't have to do that. My drag's already set and ready, so once I catch a fish, hopefully, I'm good to go. To cast a bait runner reel, it's similar to a spinning. You hold the line to the rod, open the bale, bring it back and look behind you, cast it forward, wait for it to settle, close the bale, adjust the drag so that it has enough tension to let you know there's a fish on and loose enough so that the line goes out. Now what you can do is hold your rod and wait, or you can put the rod down and with the bait runner feature, it will let you know when you have a fish on. Now watch your tip. If it starts bending, that means a fish is playing with your bait or it's ready to strike. So get ready. I got it. Okay, so what do we have? So I just got myself a hard head catfish. These guys are really cool creatures because literally their head, their skull is solid. It's really, really tough. Now, if you ever handle a catfish, you want to be incredibly careful. They have three big spines, two on their pectoral and one on their dorsal, and they are very sharp and they pack a really mean punch. So what we're going to do is we're going to release this guy. So one of the disadvantages of a dropper rig is sometimes when you catch a fish, they like to braid your line. So it's going to take me a little second to reset this up before I can cast it out again. Now, no matter how we try to avoid it as anglers, okay, we try to take all the necessary precautions. Is there a chance that you can hook up on a different animal? like a bird or a, a pelican, for example, or a sea turtle. Yes, there is a possibility, okay? They are out here as well uh, while we're pier fishing, but we want to make sure we try our best to avoid these animals. One thing you can do is wear polarized sunglasses. I don't have mine on right now, but if you wear polarized sunglasses, you can see into the water and you can, have, you can see that animal if it's approaching your bait. Um, also, if you do happen to hook up on one of these animals, 
do not cut the line, okay? That's the worst you can do because that could lead to either the hooks getting swallowed or it could lead to entanglements and possibly killing that animal, okay? So that's the worst we can do. Do not cut the line. Uh, so FWC, their new regulations just came out January 1st. Uh, and they have a whole section as to what you should do if you happen to catch a pelican, okay? You basically reel it in as best as possible, okay? Maybe have a buddy help you out, control that bird, okay? Uh, hold on to its beak, but keep it slightly open so that the animal can breathe. Um, and then try to free that animal of the hook as well as the fishing line if it happens to be wrapped around. Sea turtles, on the other hand, uh, Loggerhead Marine Life Center, they have a responsible peer initiative going on. So they want to educate anglers and educate uh, peer staff on what to do in case these animals do happen to get hooked. Okay, so they also have resources available as well, like these hoop nets. Okay, the hoop nets uh, you can use to lower into the water, kind of get it under the sea turtle because you, you don't want to reel that animal up because there's a great chance that that line will snap. Okay, it's a heavy animal. Uh, so you get the hoop net under the sea turtle okay and then you kind of you kind of maneuver that towards shore okay maneuver that towards shore and then make sure you contact the right people to get to get that sea turtle into the right hands uh, to be able to get rehabilitated or an x-ray because maybe it happened to swallow the hook okay so then they can um, make sure that all the hooks all the line uh, get off of that animal and that animal can be released back into the water as safe as possible and as healthy as possible too. So as anglers, we always want to be responsible and ethical and make sure we're not harming other wildlife. Good, that was a good strike. Here we go again, here we go again. Nice. Beautiful. You're legal. Nice. Yes. All right, I got a nice one now. So here we got a bluefish. You got to be really careful with these guys. They have some nice chompers on them. So that's why I'm using a nice little lipper to make sure that I do not get cut. Uh, we're going to measure him to make sure he's legal or not. And if he is legal, well, he's going to be my dinner. I'm glad we picked up the latest uh, copy of the fishing regulations. They just changed in on January 1st. So if we open up to the middle and we find that blue fish we just caught, minimum size, 12 inches fork length. So they do have a fork tail. Fork length means in the middle, but it changed. Anything red means the regulations changed. So the only change here, Atlantic, which we are in the Atlantic, we're not in the Gulf side of Florida. Atlantic, we're allowed three per harvester. So harvesters are the anglers. So Joanna and myself. So up to three per harvester. So three for Joanna, three for myself. or we could just keep one if we want. Throw the others back. So now that we caught that bluefish, uh, Joanna is going to recheck the line. Yep. And why? So I'm going to actually feel down the line because those bluefish have teeth. So I do have some little nicks right here. That's a little bad. Oh, I definitely have some nicks right there where he actually bit my hook. So I might need to re rig because if I relaunch this out and I catch another big fish, there's a good chance I'm gonna lose it and my line, and I don't wanna do that. When you're fishing on a pier, you always wanna practice proper pier etiquette. Some of those are space between you and the next angler. Try not to cast over each other's lines. Always look behind you when you cast. Never walk on a pier barefoot. You never know if there's any loose hooks or you know, splintered wood that might actually hurt you. Always wear shoes. 
make sure you always clean up after yourself. Dispose of your bait that you didn't use, you're gonna throw it back in the water. Any trash that you have, make sure it goes in the trash cans. Any fishing line that you've cut and used that you're not gonna need anymore, make sure you recycle it properly. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have to walk the fish down the pier if it's a big fish and it's giving you a hard time like Miss Joanna is. <laughs> we'll get them, we'll get them. Where'd you go, baby? Where'd you go? There you are. <laughs> you gonna help me? It's a big fish! Yeah, it's a big fish! It's a big fish! Oh my god! Yeah! Yeah! weeks off. Whoa, nice. Wow. You're so cute. I love you so much. Stand back so you can get on film and we'll drop yep. it right back. That's how you use a hoop net. That's <laughs> how you try to hold a fish. <laughs> okay. I right, got a baby common snook. It's a little too small for keeps. Fun fight, but it's going to go right back into the water. Nice fish. Wow, that was an exciting fish and we thank Sarah so much for helping us out with that one so that Joanna could land that fish. That was awesome. That was a snook like she said. Uh, it was a little under slot, not quite 28. So in the Atlantic they have to be in between 28 inches to 32. Uh, but also they are in a closed season right now. The closed season is December 15th to January 31st. Today is January 7th. Closed season because snook are out there spawning, doing their thing, making sure they make more uh, snook babies for more snooks so we can catch later on in the future. Woohoo! What a day we had here at Juno Beach Fishing Pier. We caught a snook, we caught a catfish, and we caught a keeper bluefish. So what we're going to do, we're going to take it back and show you how to fillet a fish and also how to cook your catch. So stay tuned for next month as we go fishing Florida. We'll take you to new locations, meet new fish, and have some more fun.